in the pre-mortal councils of heaven, God had promised Adam and Eve and all the rest of us that help would come from his pure, unblemished, firstborn son, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, as the Apostle John would later describe him. By offering their own little symbolic lambs in mortality, Adam and his posterity were expressing their understanding and their dependence upon the atoning sacrifice of Jesus, the Anointed One. Unfortunately, as a symbol of genuine repentance and faithful living, this ritualistic offering of unblemished little lambs didn't work very well, as so much of the Old Testament reveals. With such trials and troubles going on for centuries, no wonder the angels of heaven sang for joy when finally Jesus was born, the long-promised Messiah himself. Following his brief mortal ministry, this purest of all Passover sheep prepared his disciples for his death by introducing the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, a more personal form of the ordinance that had been introduced just outside of Eden. To the Nephites, after his resurrection, the Savior said of this, You shall offer unto me no more the shedding of blood. You shall offer unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, repent and be saved. My beloved brothers and sisters, with the exciting new emphasis on increased gospel learning in the home, it is crucial for us to remember that we are still commanded to go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. We are to remember in as personal a way as possible, that Christ died from a heart broken by shouldering entirely alone the sins and sorrows of the human family. Inasmuch as we contributed to that fatal burden, such a moment demands our respect. Thus we're encouraged to come to our services early and reverently, dressed appropriately for participation in a sacred ordinance, the sacred ordinance. As for punctuality, a late pass will always be lovingly granted to those blessed mothers who, with children and Cheerios and diaper bags trailing in marvelous disarray, are lucky to have made it to church at all. Furthermore, there will be others who unavoidably find their ox in the mire on a Sunday morning. However, to this latter group we say, an occasional tardiness is understandable. But if the ox is in the mire every Sunday, then we strongly recommend that you sell the ox or fill the mire. Brothers and sisters, this hour ordained of the Lord is the most sacred hour of our week. By commandment, we gather for the most universally received ordinance in the church. It is in memory of him who asked if the cup he was about to drink could pass, only to soldier on because he knew that for our sake, it could not pass. When the sacred hour comes to present our sacrificial gift to the Lord, we do have our own sins and shortcomings to resolve. That's why we're there. But we might be more successful in such contrition if we're mindful of the other broken hearts and sorrowing spirits that surround us. 
or for the weeping, struggling member who's not in the service, or for our brothers and sisters who are not members of the church at all, but are our brothers and sisters. One way to always remember him would be to join the great physician in his never-ending task of lifting the load from those who are burdened and relieving the pain of those who are distraught. Beloved friends, as we unite across the globe each week in what is an increasingly sacred acknowledgement of Christ's majestic atoning gift to all humankind, may we bring to the sacramental altar more tears for his sorrow and more pain at his grief. And then, as we reflect and pray and covenant anew, may we take from that sacred moment more patience in suffering, more praise for relief. For such patience and relief, for such holiness and hope, I pray for all of you in the name of him who broke the precious bread of forgiveness and poured the holy wine of redemption. Even Jesus Christ, the great and merciful and holy Lamb of God. Amen.